Hey guys, so it's been about five years of me farming and I've gained some valuable experience through farming. I've learned a lot of things and I think if I can share some of these things with you through my experience over these years while farming, I think they might actually be of value to you and you could skip some of the problems that you could face on your farm. I have a guava tree right here. Yeah, I have a guava tree and it has a lot of ripe guavas. Woo! This time I've got into the guavas before the birds. Take a look at this. Lovely, you know. Ah, oh. have you seen it? Looks really lovely. Mmm. I'll pause briefly and first finish this, then we'll get back. Just this left. You know, recently I shared, I think on Twitter, but if you're not following me on Twitter, you need to go and follow me. Just check out Dr. Daniel Masaba on Twitter and follow me. So, what always happens is that when I'm on the farm, and I find fruits like this, I just pick them from the tree and eat. And people are consistently reminding me to wash them. And I never remember to wash them. But why should I wash them? They're on a tree, guys. They're on a tree. Like it's been raining. Of course, there might be dust particles on it. But it's been raining recently. Why should I be washing them? Anyway, the first lesson that I learned is that you need to save up. You need to save up. If you want to start a farm, you need to make sure that you save up because you're going to need money. Yeah, you're going to need money. You don't want to be borrowing when you're starting your farm. Yeah. And when you save up, starting the farm feels a bit more valuable to you. Yeah. A farm where you've saved up and you've literally used your very own money to start the farm is more valuable in your heart. It's more valuable to you and you'll pay more attention to it. You'll do your very best to ensure that, you know, it's successful to ensure that you get the best results out of it. So you need to save up as much as possible. Even if you're not saving just for the farm, yeah? Literally just saving because saving is important in life. Just put aside money, try, put aside as much money as you can. And you never know, the opportunity might come in saving, it might come in buying a particular property somewhere, it might come in whatever business, you know, any other kind of business that you might want to start. So I advise you to save up as much as you can, put as much effort as you can into saving. Because for me, when it reached the point of starting, I didn't struggle so much because I had saved up. Guys, take a look. Right here, I had tried to plant a jambula tree. Yeah, I once asked for the name of what jambula is, but I don't know. People told me different names. They didn't seem like English. I think it didn't have an English name. And then here we have some maize seeds that grew. This one completely failed to grow, unfortunately. I think I shared it in an earlier video. Even here, I planted a jambula tree and take a look at it. This is it, guys. It has also completely failed to grow. I think this one also dried completely. Then right here, meanwhile, this is a grafted guava tree. You can see how small and tiny it is, but it already has fruits. Yeah? I have a lot of guava trees around. That that you see right there is also a guava tree. This over here is Guevaria that I planted on the farm. So literally the entire farm fence, as you can see, this is the fence running here. The entire farm all around, you know, behind the chicken houses and all around has Guevaria trees. So once the trees grow, the farm is literally going to be in a forest. This was a mango tree that I also transferred. It also died, yeah? It was mango tree number three. Let's see if number four grew. I think everything that I transferred recently died. There was number four here. Woo -hoo -hoo. It also died, guys. This is it. So I think I just transplanted them at a wrong time. You can see these bottles. We were trying to use these bottles to drip water, you know. They completely died. Now, this is the correct time to transplant anything because as you can see, everything is green because it's currently raining yeah so if you can see right here this is eggplants we have some eggplants right here so they are putting on and looking really nice eggplants for us to consume all around the farm so this is the perfect time to plant so i'm hoping very soon i'm going to be transplanting well the second thing that i learned is start immediately guys you don't need to wait you don't need to wait too long you see the stars will never be aligned perfectly it's quite easy for you to want to sit down and wait for the perfect opportunity for you to start the farm. It will never come, yeah? If you feel like you have just enough to try and find some rhythm, start, yeah? Plan for it. It doesn't matter even if it's only going to be 200 chickens, maybe five goat. You know, whatever kind of farming you want to do. Maybe just a very small plot of land and you want to grow tomatoes on it. Just start with as small as you can. Someone who starts is better than someone who is waiting for 10 years for everything to be aligned perfectly. Because what usually happens is that nothing ever 
never becomes aligned perfectly and in the end you're going to end up not starting yeah so make sure that you start as soon as you can you will figure things out as you move along of course you need to start with some basic information so do some research read learn as much as you can but don't let lack of knowledge and lack of funds stop you because with whatever amount of funds you can start with anything from anywhere sometimes you just need to rent land somewhere sometimes you just need to use borrowed land from someone you don't need to have your own land for you to start a farm yeah i personally didn't have land when i started my farm i started my farm from my dad's land i asked my dad to just let me use his land and he's my dad of course he accepted so just start with whatever you have wherever you are meanwhile just in case you're wondering this is millet yeah i don't know in your country do you eat millet this is uganda and we love millet yeah i do i do enjoy millet i know i don't know if we are i think some places don't even know what millet is yeah millet is a cereal i think just like wheat just like barley it's a cereal and we use it to make food right here so this is a garden my dad planted and honestly when he planted it was still dry we didn't think it would grow but the seasons have become really weird it has a lot of weeds though this is a huge weed how did it grow this quickly because they just weeded recently anyway it's quite understandable because we have a lot of manure around here and it's understandable that the weeds have overtaken can you imagine take a look at this the place is full of weeds just take a look full of weeds this is really crazy i think they need to come and weed it again otherwise it's all going to be suffocated you can see the places where there's not too many weeds the millet is up but here where there's too many weeds you can barely see the millet so i think they need to weed it again all right the third thing is that don't overspend on a chicken house just don't you see when it comes to businesses there are things that make you money and things that don't make you money what makes you money for example when it comes to a poultry farm is the chickens themselves yeah a chicken house doesn't make you money you can see the background those are my chicken houses and as you can see they are made from iron sheeting now when i started out i built a chicken house because i think to myself i need to build a chicken house that will last that will one that will be strong so i built using brick you know i'm thinking about quality something that will last i built using brick only to notice that i just wasted my money actually in a lot of circumstances iron iron sheeting is actually better than brick because an iron sheeting is clean it is smooth it's easier to clean for example compared to a brick wall so between flocks when one flock gets done and we are replacing it with another flock it's very easy to clean this house compared to for example a brick wall a brick wall you're not going to just you know flush water on it and you clean it you're going to probably need a pressure washer to make sure that it's properly cleaned so this is much much easier so don't overspend on a chicken house a chicken house is not going to bring you money as long as it's okay chickens don't give a damn about luxury yeah they don't want to sleep in a very beautiful nice looking maybe yellow house something like that they don't care as long as the place is ventilated as long as it's comfortable and spacious enough for them it's 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 warm enough and it's cool enough you know it's not too warm too cool then they are comfortable they have the food they need that's it spend the money where it matters yeah where does it matter things like the feed the birds themselves those are the things that are going to bring you back money later on when you have too much money you can now expand you know get a bigger chicken house you can uh, construct whatever kind of chicken house you have but at the beginning you don't have money and also the risk is too much for you at the beginning because you don't have experience you haven't learned too much i advise that don't ever spend on a chicken house when you're starting out so guys right here we're going to be putting another chicken house and you can see my colleague right there he's been picking eggs from the chicken house it's late in the evening so it's just a few eggs you know that we are picking out of the chicken houses just a few eggs yeah and uh most of the eggs have already been taken the demand for the eggs right now is crazy like really really crazy everything that's produced is just swept and taken and that's what you want as a farmer yeah and therein comes the next point yeah when you're starting start out slowly and figure out the market yeah i personally for example when i was starting the breeder farm i made a huge mistake yeah i set it out so big and uh I had the chicks and the demand for the chicks was not there it was really crazy i really suffered trying to sell the chicks yeah but with the commercial farm i started out really slowly and grew really slowly and i've never really had a problem when it comes to marketing the eggs why because as i grew i expanded the kind of people who i can sell the eggs to i took a better grasp of the market and it ensured that i consistently understand the market and i can satisfy the market if you start too big then you'll have issues handling the market yeah and remember 
it doesn't make sense for you to produce something if you can't sell it. You're just going to be wasting your money. Yeah, produce only what you can sell. Only what you can sell. Otherwise, you'll just be putting in too much effort, and all the effort just goes to waste. Everything just falls down. You understand? So start slowly, grow gradually, so that you understand the market and you get the right market. So right here, we've identified a broody chicken. You can see it; it's in water. So just its head is out. That's a broody chicken. So what we usually do is that you just dip it in water and leave it there for maybe 30 seconds or so and then after that you go and isolate it from from the rest of the group so what happens is that once you enter the chicken house you'll find some chickens that will start sitting on their eggs and that's what they call getting broody you don't want that to happen because chickens that sit on their eggs uh, don't lay eggs so we dump it in water just like he has done right here and then after that he will he will get it out and he's going to take it to another unit so he has a second one which he later place inside here after he has taken the first broody chicken into our isolation unit you see we have an isolation unit right there you no know, i'll zoom in here that unit where we place the broody chickens and after the broodiness has gone away then we can put it back into the chicken house so that's what he has done he has taken one and he's going to bring the second one do the very same thing to it and then take it back inside there so right here you can see that i have a fence yeah this is a fence that I put around my farm. Now my place is about three acres in terms of size and I faced quite an expense fencing it. Yeah, it was quite an expense. But I had to face the price because before personally had a really terrible experience with diseases on the farm. Yeah, a terrible experience with diseases on the farm and I've lost almost literally the entire flock due to fall typhoid. Yeah. And uh, one of the likely causes of diseases on the farm is a disease comes from the outside. So biosecurity is very important. So the other lesson is that paying attention to biosecurity. Fencing this farm costs quite an amount of money, but that's nothing compared to what could happen, for example, if the chickens in this chicken house and in this chicken house all die. This is about 5,000 chickens. Imagine how much money I would be losing if they all died. Yeah? So you need to pay keen attention to preventing diseases on the farm and the most effective way of preventing diseases on your farm is using biosecurity. Pay as much attention as you can to biosecurity and that will ensure that you don't go through the pain and chaos of crying because you've lost chickens due to diseases. Yeah? Just like human beings prevent diseases. We prevent diseases by making sure our homes are clean. You know, you sleep under a mosquito net if you're in a malaria prone area. You know, you make sure that it's well cooked food. You don't just eat from anywhere. We dump our trash in proper places to prevent diseases. Same thing, yeah? Don't think about treating chickens. Think about how to prevent diseases in the chicken. And the other thing is, you need to make sure that you learn from others, but question all the information that you get. You see, I personally, when I started out my farm, I didn't have too many places that I could get information from. No, I didn't, yeah? There are a few farmers who I went and visited, but honestly, later on, I found out that a lot of the information that they shared with me was actually wrong information, yeah? Now, you need to make sure that you learn from others because there are a lot of other people who actually know better than you. But once you find out information, always go and do some research about it. Question it. Don't take it as gospel truth. Like I've told you, most farmers that I've personally visited actually practice the wrong things. Now, I've visited a few farmers who actually give me a life-changing idea. One that literally flips everything around and increases either my efficiency or profitability on the farm so you need to make sure that you're open to learning from others but don't take everything as gospel truth always question everything question everything because someone has been farming for maybe 10 12 years that doesn't mean that he's an expert and he has figured everything out because learning never stops yeah so be open to questioning everything nothing is gospel truth now the other important thing i've learned is that never rush growth yeah don't try to grow too fast this i've learned bitterly on one of my farms yeah when you grow too quickly it's like you know having a baby try to run a marathon you understand so there are some things a baby can't do they are they are still a baby there are things that they need to learn so you need to make sure that you don't 
rush your growth. As you grow, you will learn particular things. The thing about farming is that it's a business. You understand? It's a business. Just like any other business, treat it like a business. Did you know that 80% of all small businesses that start up fail within their first five years? So if you're rushing to grow, what are you rushing to? Are you rushing towards your failure? Are you rushing towards your fall? I personally, it has taken me five years of farming and I have grown to this rate. Don't expect to get what I've gotten in five years in just one month or one year. You're like, oh, I'm starting out with 500 chickens, but in one year I want to have 10,000 chickens. Why? Why the rush? Yeah? You're rushing towards your fall. Yeah. So just think about all the other businesses that start. Most of them are going to fail. So don't rush. What you need to understand is that there is time. Businesses take Take time to grow, give it time, give it the effort, give it the concentration that it requires. And with time, you see, the growth that you take, for example, in your first five years, is going to be so different from what happens in your next two years. For example, you can grow from five to 20 goats in your first five years, but in your next five years, you could grow from 20 to 500 goats. You understand? Eh? There is what they call exponential growth. But exponential growth only happens if you've figured out particular things. So don't rush the growth. And then the other thing, that I talked about earlier is about getting money and that's borrowing in this case yeah you see you can get rushed to borrow you understand because you want to expand when I wanted to expand I borrowed a while back currently I haven't borrowed in in quite a while but there's a time I borrowed yeah and when I was building this feed store for example I used my own money but when I was building the upper section of the very first chicken house that I built I borrowed because I didn't have the money then but the farm was growing. I knew that I could pay back the money. And I had a proof of concept. So if you're going to be borrowing, borrow only to expand. Don't borrow to start. The risk of failure is actually quite high at the beginning. And it's just not worth it for you to literally borrow when you're starting it. So the advice is borrow only to expand. Don't borrow to start. Yeah, You're putting too much risk on yourself. You don't know what might happen. And then the bank is going to come. It's going to need its money. And you started with borrowed money. And you've literally failed. Yeah. So go slowly. Don't have too much faith in the fact that you've understood everything. Like I've said, the biggest percentage of small businesses fail. But the reason you're on farm up is because you don't want to fail. If you don't want to fail, you learn as much as possible. But even if your chances of succeeding are 90%, that means there's a 10% chance of failing. And you don't want to take it that way. Yeah. So that's why it's important that you save up and use your very own money while starting up. This is our banana plantation, guys. I feel like it's over fertilized. Too much manure. Take a look at all the manure on the ground. So we've stopped pouring manure inside here. Because we just have too, too much manure. It's just too much. Yeah, it's too much. It's certainly not worth it. Yeah? So we've stopped putting manure inside here. I have a lot of land, you know, even right at the top there. A lot of land that actually needs manure, even far away from here. As you can see, we've been weeding. Some of the garden hasn't been, I don't know, what do they say? Weeded or wait? Tell me in the comment section below. I don't know what it is. I think we did, yeah? So we haven't yet weeded this section of the banana plantation. When we build another chicken house, just like that one right there, it's going to cut into the banana plantation right here. So what I want to do is that I want to expand the banana plantation right here. So you see this top part? That top part doesn't have bananas and I want to place, you know, Maybe two more lines of bananas right there. Meanwhile, more guavas, guys. More guavas. Take a look at... Oh my god, the birds have been eating. Take a look at this, guys. Take a look. Take a look. All the guavas are the ground. Take a look at this. Oh, this is ripe and ready. The birds have been enjoying themselves. Yeah? You can this, see this, for example. This was consumed by the birds, sir. It's quite not clear, but you can see it right there. It was eaten by birds. Even that right there was eaten by birds. A lot of guavas, yeah? So I'm going to harvest some for me to consume. The guys on the farm are not eating them. I think they got tired of them. Just take a look at that. So the next point is you've got to endure through the tough times. Tough times will come, yeah? That's what you need to understand. It's literally impossible for anyone to go through life without tough times. They are meant to come. They literally just come. Whether it's going to be COVID, even if you've tried to run everything perfectly, there'll be something like COVID-19 which will come. 
yeah so you need to make sure that you endure the tough times don't give up you must develop thick skin yeah you need to develop thick skin tough times will come but the tough times are not meant to fail you the tough times are meant to be a learning point for you like i've already told you i've lost chickens thousands of chickens due to disease i've suffered with market and sometimes gone into a lot of debt because i need to borrow money to pay for feed and uh, the market is really terrible i have nowhere to sell the product so you need to make sure that you endure the tough times the tough times are not meant to break you there's no one who is against you the universe hasn't connived against you it's just how the world functions and you must develop thick skin to go through the tough times yeah i'm personally a christian and in the bible there's a verse that says that if you fail in the hard times then there was nothing to you in the first place there was completely nothing to you so you need to make sure that you endure the tough times that proves that you're actually a strong person one that can actually go through tough times and outlast them and then the next point is you need to learn to treat your employees well treat them with dignity you see you personally want to be treated well you want to be treated like a human being you want to be treated like a valuable person it doesn't make sense then for you to treat other people terribly and expect the best results remember i personally for example don't do any work any serious work on the farm yeah most of my work is you know giving guidance you can see the chicken houses around uh when i talk about weeding you know we've just been talking about weeding this garden it was guys who are weeding it we've been talking about the broody chicken you saw that it was someone who was putting the chicken in their broody pen and someone who was dipping it in water i showed you someone who, who had collected eggs all these people are people who are working on the farm and it's not me you want the best results you continuously complain that the guys are bad but then you don't treat them properly yeah like i've already shown you guys uh, i have a lot of gardens on the farm that actually put little effort in but these guys grow the crops themselves right now i've just picked a few bunches of bananas i'll go show you the bunches of bananas but you can see more vegetables right here all the vegetables yeah so from our banana plantation you can see a few bunches of bananas right there yeah so those are bunches of banana for me to consume right from the garden right there but who is the garden the guys yeah who takes care of them the guys so how do i expect to get something from the garden if you're not taking proper care of them so ideally the message is do unto others what you want to be done unto you yeah you take proper good care of them you know give them proper accommodation give them you know a proper place to sleep give them give them food and how do you expect them to work when they don't even have the basic necessities of food you know they don't have water around yeah so do unto them what you want to be done unto you you want the best results out of the farm then make sure that you give them at least the basic requirements and if possible go above that pay them you know a decent amount of pay don't pay them don't literally make them please and beg to be paid i understand that there are circumstances where you know the farm might be in a difficult financial situation and that's understandable yeah it's understandable that maybe sometimes salaries might delay and things like that but if salaries delay the workers will literally be patient with you because they know how you treat them and they understand that it's, it's just a moment in time so deal with them properly now the other point is paying attention to record keeping you see record keeping is that one thing that can help you identify trends and make changes on the farm yeah if for example the food consumption of the chickens keeps decreasing each and every day you know let's say they have been consuming 100 kilos every day and then tomorrow it's 99 then tomorrow then the next day is 99.5 then the next day is 98 then the next day is 97.5 you know if you're not keeping records you won't notice such subtle changes by the time you notice it will be 90 kilos and you're like it looks like i'm keeping way more feed than usual or it looks like i'm spending less on feed these days what's happening yeah because you're not even weighing you don't know how much they're consuming but if you understand how much they're consuming then you will understand the small tiny nitty gritties of changes and then you'll be able to do something about it identify that maybe there's a problem there's an illness or also identify maybe when the guys are stealing from the farm stealing the feed those little tiny nitty gritties ensure that the farm remains efficient so you need to pay attention to record keeping yeah keep as much records as possible the more the records the better it is for you the more the records the more likely it is that you will identify issues with the farm and the more likely it is that you will succeed so keep as much records as possible there's never anything like keeping too much records and then lastly and maybe one of the most important is that always explain why 
something is being done you see on the farm it's quite easy to just give orders yeah you assume that the people you're working with because you're probably more intelligent or you know you understand things better you assume that you'll just tell them and well they'll just go along with it the thing with life is that everything makes more sense once it's explained yeah if someone explains something to me i'll have more reason to do it yeah and explains not just the thing but explains why it is being done for example if you're telling the people we need to make sure that we deworm the goats every three months then you need to explain to them why we deworm the goats every three months if we don't deworm the goats every three months the worms infestations are going to overwhelm the animals they will start you know bleeding or they will die you'll have worms moving to their brain or something like that you need to make sure that you explain why whenever you explain why you increase the results of the action that you're trying to change to be implemented you understand people want to do things when they're explained to why if someone is not told why they feel like they're being forced to do something they're like well we've been doing things this way why all of a sudden are you changing and why are we doing this yeah you need to make sure that you explain why explaining why will ensure that the farm runs very smoothly and you have the very best results on your farm so always explain why it doesn't matter to who so i hope you have enjoyed the video these are you know some of the things that literally could just come off my head that i believe have changed so much about how i believe and how i implement things and if you implement them on your farm you're going to have the very best results don't forget to hit the subscribe button smash the notification bell that we never miss out on an upload catch you very soon with another one lots of love bye bye